Greetings. This is St. Mark's Episcopal Church, Richmond, Texas. This is Kids Kingdom, uh, elementary uh, Christian formation intended for uh, children in grades one through five. I am Chris Abbott, the Christian formation teacher. If you have not already signed up for this class and you would like to be a participant in it, please let the church office know and they'll get in touch with me and I'll be happy to get you the materials and the supplies that you need in order to participate. And once again, we wish we were meeting in person, but for the meantime, this is, uh, we have YouTube and we can continue on as best we can uh, in this manner. So, uh, we have spent the last three weeks um, studying about Joseph in the uh, Old Testament, and we will be continuing with that unit um, today. And of course, we always begin in prayer. Dear God, thank you for teaching us about Joseph. Even though lots of bad things happened to Joseph, he kept his faith in you, God. Help us to learn how we can have that faith too. Amen. Okay, to just go back and uh, kind of review the story just a little bit to make sure that we're uh, got this. Uh, remember that we have um, Abraham and Sarah. Their son is Isaac, and Isaac has the son we're talking about in this story. That's Jacob, and Jacob. If this were to be continued on down here, uh, Jacob would have all of his sons the one of which who's Joseph that we're talking about in the um, stories we've been reading recently. Now, if you'll remember, uh, Jacob seems to love Joseph more. He gives this amazing coat to him with all of these colors on it, and he, he really favors him, and the other brothers don't much like that. They're they're pretty jealous of that, and uh, they just can't get used to the father giving all of his time and attention to Joseph. And so there's a lot of jealousy and a lot of anger going on in the story. And Joseph doesn't help things himself. He um, talks about these dreams that he has and how his wheat grows up taller and straighter than the wheat of his brothers. And then he talks about how all the stars in the sky bow down to him. Well, that naturally makes the brothers a little bit uh, angry and jealous and they don't like his bragging. And I, it's just not a good situation going on between Joseph and, and his brothers. And then what really sets it all off is um, the father sends the other sons off to take care of the sheep. And a little while later, he sends Joseph out to check on them and make sure they're okay. And the other brothers begin to think about, you know, we just don't like Joseph. I, I, nah. So they decide they're going to throw him in a pit and just let him die in the pit. Well, Reuben, one of the brothers, thinks, okay, well, we'll go ahead and throw him in the pit, but after everybody else is gone, I'll come along and rescue him out of the pit. But as they're sitting there talking about all of this, some travelers, some merchants on their way to Egypt come by, and then it dawns on them, hey, how about this? We'll sell Joseph to these travelers, and they'll turn around and sell jo Joseph as a slave, in Egypt and that way we've gotten rid of Joseph and we get a little bit of money for it and yet we haven't killed him. So that's the plan. That's what happens and off Joseph goes to Egypt where um, he has trouble to begin with with the Pharaoh and he's thrown into jail and oh things are just not looking good for Joseph. And you can imagine that Joseph is thinking to himself, oh Where's God? I thought he liked me. I thought he loved me. Why are all these bad things happening to me? And that's what's going on in, in, in Joseph's mind. And uh, we read the, um, this part of the story last week. We're going to read it again today. 
Um, this is on page 60 and 61. And this is when things begin to turn around a little bit for Joseph and things are going to improve. And maybe you remember a little bit about what happens in this part of the story. So, on page 60, Pharaoh's Dreams. Two years had passed and still Joseph was in jail. Then, one night, Pharaoh had a strange dream. He was standing by the river Nile and while he watched, Seven cows, fat and healthy, came out of the water to feed. A little while later, seven thin cows came out of the river, so lean and bony they could hardly stand. The thin cows ate up the fat cows. Pharaoh woke up with a start, and he fell asleep and he dreamed again. This time, he saw seven ears of wheat growing plump and golden on a single stalk. Then he saw seven shriveled ears of wheat, which ate up the seven large ears. In the morning, Pharaoh demanded that someone be found to explain his dreams. All the wise men and the magicians were brought before Pharaoh, but no one could tell him the meaning of his dreams. It was then that the cupbearer remembered Joseph and told Pharaoh how he had correctly interpreted both his and the baker's dreams. Joseph was immediately released from prison and brought before Pharaoh. After thinking for a moment, Joseph said, God has revealed to me what your dreams mean. Egypt is about to enjoy seven years of great plenty to be followed by seven years of terrible famine. In the time of plenty, you must save grain from the harvest and store it, so there will be enough to eat during the famine. Pharaoh was so impressed by Joseph that he decided to promote him to the highest office. Pulling the ring from his own finger, he gave it to Joseph. Then he hung a heavy gold chain around his neck and dressed him in fine linen robes. He presented him with a magnificent chariot. You shall be the ruler of the whole of Egypt, he declared, second in power only to myself. Under Joseph's supervision, grain was gathered and stored during the seven years of good harvest. Then. When the lean years arrived, there was more than enough for all. There was so much that people came from distant lands to buy grain, for the famine was everywhere. And those pictures at the bottom of 60 and 61 show the progress of that story. Uh, Joseph explaining to the Pharaoh what his dreams mean, and the Pharaoh promoting him to be the second most important ruler in Egypt, and then um, the grain being grown and stored and getting ready for the famine that would happen. Okay, so what is Joseph thinking as he's telling these dreams to the Pharaoh and the Pharaoh is promoting him to be the most important person, second most important person in Egypt? He's thinking, whoa, okay, things are back on track. God does love me. God did help me. God did give me direction because God helped him explain what the dreams meant to the Pharaoh. So even though things looked pretty bad for Joseph there for a while, things have definitely turned around and they're a lot better now. So my question to you is, what do you do when something just isn't going your way and things are terrible? Yell, scream, run around the house and shout at everybody else? Mm, is that going to help solve the problem? Probably not. So let me give you an example. Pretend that you're having trouble with math at school and you came home with a bad math test grade and you're pretty down, and you're pretty depressed, and you just don't know what to do about that. 
And then all of a sudden it dawns on you, well, maybe my older brother or sister could help me with this math. Or maybe mom and dad could help me with this math. Or maybe if I went and asked the teacher, the teacher could help me with this, this math. And you think, oh, okay, let's give that a try. That's worth, that's worth giving it a try. So you do that and you get some help from somebody else. And well, next time you have a math test, your grade has improved tremendously. And you're thinking, yippee, I did it. But you did it because God, that little voice on your shoulder was talking to you and he said, get some help, talk to somebody, get some assistance, see what you can do about it instead of just yelling and screaming. That's not gonna get you anywhere. And this is what Joseph was able to do. With God's help, he was able to interpret the dreams and help the Pharaoh. So, you know I always have a challenge for you each week. So that's the challenge this week. See what kind of a problem you're, you're dealing with. And with the help of God, talking to him, praying to him, talking to adults, see if you can come up with a plan that will help you with whatever the problem is that you're, that you're dealing with. Okay, now, uh, in your bag of supplies this week, you had a um, box of instant chocolate pudding. Uh, you had one uh, Oreo that was in a baggie all by itself. Because the container had more Oreos than I needed, you got the extra Oreos to eat some other time. And you got a baggie of gummy worms more than you actually need for today's exercise, but once again, it was more than I needed, so I'm passing them along to you. So, uh, you're going to need three cups of milk at home in order to um, mix the pudding. And you can stop me here now, and you can come back after you mix the pudding. Um, and I will show you that I have already mixed my chocolate pudding. Here it is, got it. All set and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making dirt pudding okay dirt obviously chocolate that that's easy to understand all right and you've got the one baggie in the or, or one Oreo in the baggie all by itself and you're looking at this one Oreo and you're thinking mmm yummy yummy how am I gonna eat this Oreo am I gonna pull the two parts of it apart and eat one half at a time? Am I going to bite little bites of it? Am I going to try and scoop off the frosting on the, or the icing on the inside of the Oreo? And while you're thinking about that, if we were in the classroom at church and you'd be holding up this baggie with the Oreo and all of a sudden I would come around the room and I would and I would be banging on your Oreo. So all you have left are crumbs. And you're gonna be thinking, what the heck? Why did she do that? Aha, a problem. All right. So, in the meantime, I would be helping myself to a little chocolate pudding and putting it in the, the bowl here. And, being as this is um, supposed to be dirt pudding, ooh, I have a good, delicious, yummy uh, gummy worm in there, and I'm going to put that gummy worm down inside my pudding, because, of course, worms are down inside the dirt. And then I'd be saying to myself, what am I going to do with this smashed up Oreo? Well, okay. It probably still tastes okay. Okay, how about if I sprinkle the Oreo, the smashed up Oreo on the top of the pudding? Okay, all right, that's not so bad. And take a bite. Okay, I got the gummy worm and the pudding and the Oreo. Mmm, tastes good. Mmm, and there's that worm. See if I can get a bite of the worm too. Mmm, yummy, yummy. 
Okay. So, was pretty good. Was the whole putting a complete another waste and a disaster because I had smashed up the Oreo and made the little crumb pieces? No. You came up with a solution to the problem. You'd sprinkle the uh, Oreo crumbs on top of the pudding. You stirred it. It was delicious anyway. Didn't matter. So that's almost what Joseph's doing. He has a problem. God is helping him with the solution to the problem. And things are looking much better. Things are looking just fine for your dirt pudding. Anyway, <laughs> I hope you enjoy the pudding and the, the extra Oreos and the extra gummy worms that you get along with the project. But remember that God loves you. He's going to help you. He's going to give you direction. He's going to give you device, uh, uh, some kind of advice. And there are solutions to problems. Okay. As you know, we always end our lesson with the Lord's Prayer. So, the Lord be with you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, this concludes our lesson for Sunday, October the 3rd. Uh, hope you enjoy your <laughs> dirt pudding. Uh, send me a picture of your eating the dirt pudding. I'd really like um, to see that. Anyway, thank you for joining us. Goodbye from St. Mark's Episcopal Church, Richmond, Texas. Bye-bye.